and your utilities are selling it to you, and they have to, and they can pass the costs on to you. Also, you're paying an energy efficiency fee. Every month, you pay a couple dollars to your, your utility. They take the money. They operate a program to teach you to be more energy efficient. They send you a flyer in the mail reminding you to put up your shades or your storm windows. So you're paying for that now, and what I would do is I would unroll that. I would unravel that. That took us in the wrong direction. She's denied permits for coal plants in Michigan. Most of our energy in Michigan comes from coal, 60%. The, the newest coal plant is over 30 years old. Consumers Power wants to build a new one in Saginaw and in Bay City. She's denied the permits. Clean coal is much more affordable than wind and solar. They're fine. But Michigan, in Michigan, the weather's fickle. To base an energy policy on wind and solar doesn't make sense here. It can help, but it's too expensive and it shouldn't be mandated. We need clean coal. We need those permits issued so we can build new coal plants and we need to look at nuclear. We get about 27% of our power from nuclear. That's the way to go. And as governor, that's the direction I would take us. All right, next question for uh, Congressman Pete Hoekstra. Uh, David, I want to get to your side of the room over there. All right, we'll take this gentleman over here then. Senator Holstra, uh, in the past you voted... Don't demote him. He's a congressman. A congressman. You voted for the uh, bridge that leads to nowhere. Can you comment on why you voted on that? The, uh, it's in the highway bill. It gives more money back to Michigan. It's a huge transportation bill. You know, I'm proud of my voting record and spending. Most organizations that score fiscal conservatism in Washington, D.C. consistently rate me 95 to 97 percent. Last year I was 100 percent on earmarks. In 1995, when Republicans started the process to balancing the budget, I voted to keep government shut down. Don't go after me on spending, man. I've got one of the best records in Washington, D.C. on spending, and I'll take that same record here to this state. All right, the next question the next question is for all of the candidates, and uh, I'm going to exercise the moderator's choice here and ask it. I'd like to hear what specific cuts, gentlemen, you're proposing to shrink the Michigan bureaucracy. Where specifically are you going to cut it? Well, I've got uh, a lot to do in every department. A lot of it's on my website, BouchardForGovernor.com. But specifically, as an example, when I took over the sheriff's office, I wanted to have more ability to have deputies on the ground in the air and better protecting the community, homeland security issues. So I needed more money, but you don't have more money. So I competitively bid feeding the inmates, as Frank said in the opening. I save $1.6 million every year just on food for the inmates. Plus the company also makes airline food. So they get punished in the same, you know, it's a, it's a twofer. But the, here's the point. I've saved $15 million on food alone. If the state did the same thing, Department of Corrections, the estimates, $40 million every year. Now, as you begin to go through the budgets, and I have and will, because I chaired a lot of those when we were doing the cuts with then Governor Engler, I can cut a quarter billion out of corrections. I can cut a quarter billion out of education and redirect that money to the classroom where it matters. You know, one of my plans is to take transportation, food service, and janitorial, competitively bid it on an ISD, intermediate school district basis, countywide. Troy did it. They saved $4 million this year. They're one of 550-plus school districts in the state. Do the math on that. That money can then be reapplied to the classroom, smaller class sizes, technology, teacher support. We got to remember, this is about the kids, not about who we hire and how many folks are on the payroll. I'm going to do that in every budget. I have specifics on everything because I've run those budgets when we were doing the cutting. I'll do it again. Things won't get buried in a big bill. I will line item veto things if it gets to my desk. We will downsize. We will make government work for you again and bring Michigan back. Well, you should know that in the last decade, Michigan has lost a million jobs. We used to have five million people working. Now we're down to four. A decade ago, we had a million and a half on state aid. And I'm talking welfare or Medicaid, a million and a half. Five million working, million and a half on aid. Now, we have four million working, 
and three million on state aid. The cost of government, the cost of government has been shifted to these social programs. We've cut in other areas. The number of state employees since the mid-90s has gone from 65,000 to 55,000. The, the savings to be gained are in restructuring the social contracts. And what Michigan does not do, we do not time limit welfare like Indiana does to 48 months. We do not have a hard time limit. We need that. And as you heard earlier, we fail to ask for personal responsibility from our Medicaid recipients. My, my, when I go do a labor epidural, 40% of those patients are on Medicaid. Half of them are smoking a pack a day and half of them have missed their prenatal visits. The, the real savings to be achieved are in renegotiating, if you will, those social contracts. That's where the money's going. Working for the state, as I said before, needs to be a good job. It can't be the best job. You downsize the bureaucracy and you make sure that their benefits and their salaries are in line with what we are getting in the private sector. Uh, the second thing you do is you take a look at Medicaid. The federal government mandates what the benefit levels or what the minimum requirements are for Medicaid. Michigan offers a significant range of benefits beyond what the federal government mandates. You scale those back. We can't afford that anymore. The third thing you do is you take a look at privatization. Uh, in the northern part of my congressional district, I had a prison. It was doing fine. A private prison. Jenny closed it. They were performing. They were doing their, their job in terms of providing public safety by keeping bad people off, off of the streets. There was one problem. They weren't union. You know, the government's got to be blind to whether someone wears a union label or whether they're not wearing a union label. <laughs> this is about getting value for your dollar and the fourth thing is transportation. Get more for your buck. Do private-public partnerships in terms of improving uh, the infrastructure in this state. All right, thank you. Now the uh, fourth member of our panel, I understand, has arrived. He is in the house. I don't see him. There he is. All right, Michael. See you. Attorney General, we've been through two rounds of questions for each individual. We give 90 seconds on these answers. So I'm going to get two questions for you back to back, and then we'll go back to our regular order. So uh, get ready. For, uh, for Attorney General Mike Cox. This is for Attorney General Cox. Uh, what do we got here? Anybody near you, David? You get that gentleman right there in the dark shirt. Come forward right there. Yes, that gentleman. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, Thank you for having me. A question for you since you brought up the CCW issue. <clears throat> Yes. Um, there's a lot of confusion about uh, Michigan's right to open carry. I've, I've emailed your office a couple times and I have gotten back a response. We're too busy to deal with this. Do you have a stance on open carry? Uh, yes, I'm in favor. It, it, the Michigan law doesn't address it or prohibit it. Some local communities have some uh, ordinance on it. Uh, but since we're talking about CCW, which I didn't mention specifically, I'm proud to say that when our fair governor left office, my, the Attorney General's office, only, we, you can only use your CCW in eight other states. And now if you go on my website at michigan.gov slash AG, you will see a map of the United States and through the good work of folks in my office and of course a little prodding from me, it's now up to 36 different states. And so for all of you who have CPLs, please check it out. Another question for the Attorney General. Come on forward. Uh, let's, let's let uh, Mr. Niffin have a question here. Thank you. Um, Mike, on, uh, according to your annual statement, on 4-20-2009, you received $60,000 in campaign donations from uh, employees and relatives of two law firms, Labatton, Sutero, and Berman DeVario. My uh -huh. question is, how much is you, uh, your office and the state of Michigan paying these two law firms to fight the case as co-counsel for uh, Bear Stur uh, Michigan uh, Retirement Fund versus Bear Stearns? Okay, good question. 